Hello, and welcome back to Polk Crew Gaming. We are playing Dear Esser, a remarkable and beautiful game um, about a man on a journey, or a woman on a journey. You never find out. Um, so we're just going to play and play right from the beginning. Yes. So yeah, so this is, uh, this is a fucking amazing game. I've, uh, I've had it previously on a different, uh, thing, but I recently just picked up a new one for full price. It, uh, retails for about 11 bucks, so pretty cheap. Dear Esther, I sometimes feel as if I've given birth to this island. Somewhere between the longitude and latitude, a split opened up, and it beached remotely here. No matter how hard I correlate, it remains a singularity, an alpha point in my life that refuses all hypothesis. I return each time, leaving fresh markers that I hope, in the full glare of my hopelessness, will have blossomed into fresh insight in the interim. Oh, so this is what happens when you leave. If you try to, like, escape into the water. Like, if I go too far out, So yeah, it just screws with you like that. I don't know. There's like an invisible wall out there. But you can stay underwater just forever. That's kind of cool, right? Um, there's a zoom button. There's a kind of run button. It's like, just zoom me run. But yeah. It's very pretty, this game. Uh, so yeah, so here we go. We're gonna go into this house. So just so you know, this there is no antagonist. There is no like person being like, Wah. I'll kill you. So that's a gross toilet. But yeah, so this is this weird, gross-looking house. Let's continue, shall we? Let's go along the beach. The goal is to get to that lighthouse over there. I think I'm going to break this into, say, 15 minute chunks and see where that lands us. A moss growing everywhere on stuff. The ground looks a tiny bit PlayStation 2, but it's alright. You can see it like rendering in front of me. Oh, there's traps. Crab fisherman. Those islands in the distance, I'm sure, are nothing more than relics of another time. Sleeping giants, somnambulist gods laid down for a final dreaming. I wash the sand from my lips and grip my wrist ever more tightly. My shaking arms will not support my fading diaries. 
Wow. It's like very old English. Look at these cliffs. I have found the ship's manifest, crumpled and waterlogged under a stash of paint cans. It tells me that along with this present cargo, there was a large quantity of antacid yogurt bound for the European market. It must have washed out to sea. God knows there are no longer gulls or goats here to eat it. <laughs> I guess that's it. I really like this music. Hmm. Drawn in the sand. I love the listening to the crashing of the waves and the wind off the ocean. If anyone lives, uh, any of my viewers lives on like a, an island sort of off the coast sort of situation, let me know if this is sort of kind of what it's like, you know, where like you're looking out and it's just wind coming off the ocean, you can smell the ocean and I used to live in a town called, um, or a city called P, uh, Charlottetown in PEI, Prince Edward Island, and uh, you could smell like the, the, the ocean, you know, and it was very whimsical and beautiful, and you know, I, I, I could never get enough of it. Donnelly's book had not been taken out from the library since 1974. I decided it would never be missed as I slipped it under my coat and avoided the librarian's gaze on the way out. If the subject matter is obscure, the writer's literary style is even more so. It is not the text of a stable or trustworthy reporter. Perhaps it is fitting that my only companion in these last days should be a stolen book written by a dying man. When someone had died or was dying, was so ill they gave up what little hope they could sacrifice. They cut parallel lines into the cliff, exposing the white chalk beneath. You could see them from the mainland or the fishing boat, and know to send aid or impose a cordon of protection, and wait a generation until whatever pestilence stalked the cliff paths died along with its hosts. My lines are just for this, to keep any would-be rescuers at bay. The infection is not simply of the flesh. By the way, this vegetation, it's, it's using a... They were God-fearing people, those shepherds. There was no love in the relationship. Donnelly tells me that they had one Bible that was passed around in strict rotation. It was stolen by a visiting monk in 1776, two years before the island was abandoned altogether. In the interim, I wonder, did they assign chapter and verse to the stones and grasses, marking the geography with a superimposed significance that they could actually walk the Bible and inhabit its contradiction? You can see the, um, the plants always follow me. They're always facing me. Isn't that interesting? Like, it's a 2D image that's sort of rendered in such a way that, like, I can sort of manipulate it. I think it's kind of interesting, especially from like a game that's just a visual, you know, with some like light poetry and like a little bit of storytelling. Hey, there's a ship over there. A rune ship. Dear Esther, 
I met Paul. I made my own little pilgrimage. My Damascus, a small semi-detached on the outskirts of Wolverhampton. We drank coffee in his kitchen and tried to connect to one another. Although he knew I hadn't come in search of an apology, reason or retribution, he still spiralled in panic, thrown high and lucid by his own dented bonnet. Responsibility had made him old. Like us, he'd already passed beyond any conceivable boundary of life. I threw my arms wide and the cliff opened out before me, making this rough home. I transferred my belongings from the bothy on the mount and tried to live here instead. It was cold at night and the sea lapped at the entrance at high tide. To climb the peak, I must first venture even deeper into the veins of the island, where the signals are blocked altogether. Only then will I understand them, when I stand on the summit and they flow into me, uncorrupted. So there's a, I guess, a chemical equation on the wall, and then a sleeping bag with a couple papers. He's using phosphorescent paint. It's pretty neat. It's a little effect, and then there's some clothes here. This will definitely not be the first or last cave, but we'll see, so... I guess technically is the first cave, we'll see. <laughs> It'll definitely not be the last, regardless. I wonder if it's worth going out to that boat. me back. Alright, well, this uh, this seems like a good spot to call it a first episode. Um, I know they're short episodes, but this is going to be a short game. So, uh, you know, uh, I figured I'll break it up into reasonable chunks. Uh, please like, comment, subscribe, and uh, we will play more Dear Esser. Um, this beautiful, sort of whimsical game. Thank you guys. Have a good night.